In today's experiment, we're going to have a close investigation of some acid-base chemistry. We're going to look at the pH properties of buffer solutions, and we're going to use a pH titration to determine the concentration of ammonia in a commercial product. Before we begin, I'd like to highlight that when watching this video, please make sure you pay particular attention to the direction involved. People often draw this experiment out over a long period of time. If you follow these instructions, you'll recognize that the preparation of a buffer solution and a pH titration should be a very quick and efficient process. This should not be a long experiment. First of all, you'll need to calibrate your pH electrode. There are buffer solutions and instructions provided, and you can just put your pH electrode directly into the buffer solutions like so. Once you've finished the calibration and when you're not using your electrode, please store it in the salt solution. You'll also be using a stirrer plate today. Please make sure you use the stirrer, not the heat setting. In order to prepare your buffer solution, we start with a 0.2 molar acetic acid solution, a weak acid. So measure out approximately 75 mils of that solution using a measuring cylinder. And pour that into a beaker with your stirrer. You can then turn on the stirrer, again not the heat. Place your pH electrode in the solution, make sure the stirrer isn't bashing against it, and record the pH of the solution. Then take 75 mils of 0.2 molar sodium acetate, a weak base, the conjugate weak base, of your acetic acid. Add that to your acetic acid, you now have a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, a buffer solution. Once you've measured the pH of that solution, I then want you to split it into three even 50 mil portions. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate, you can just pour by eye into beakers. We're then going to observe the properties of a buffer by adding sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and tap water to our different buffer solutions and watching the effect that that has on the pH. When you finish this section of the experiment, please make sure you don't tip the magnetic stirrer bar the flea down the sink. The second half of your experiment involves the titration of a pre-diluted solution of a commercial product, cloudy ammonia. Take some of the pre-diluted ammonia solution, note the dilution factor, take a 20 mil aliquot, and deliver it into a tall, narrow beaker. Then using a measuring cylinder, add approximately 100 mils of distilled water to that ammonia. This isn't to dilute the solution, it's to bulk it up to ensure that your pH electrode is covered at all times. The addition of this water will not affect the number of moles of ammonia in your sample. Pop your magnetic stirrer bar into the solution, and then complete your setup according to this picture here. Place your sample underneath the burette. Turn on your stirrer, make sure it's not spinning into the side of your flask. And lastly, place your pH electrode in the solution. Make sure it's not in the path of the burette and also not in the way of the magnetic stirrer bar. Then take an initial reading, volume zero, record the pH of your solution, and plot that on a graph. You need to plot this graph as you go throughout the experiment. In order to get a smooth titration curve with a sensible result, I now need you to get into a pattern and not break it throughout the experiment. If you stand by this routine, your experiment will be done in a very time efficient fashion and it will also provide an accurate set of results for you. What I would like you to do right throughout the experiment is make an addition from your burette. One more additions in the first instance. Take a reading from your pH meter, write down the result in your result sheet, and then plot it on your graph. Repeat this procedure throughout the experiment. Make an addition, count to 10, take a reading, plot it. Make an addition, count to 10, take a reading, plot it. If you do that, you'll end up with a nice smooth titration curve like this one. But more importantly, you'll notice when the curve starts to get to the steep section, that's where the data that you are most interested in lies. So when you notice it's starting to curve over, you then need to decrease the size of your additions. Instead of adding one mil at a time, Try adding 0.5 mils at a time, then count to 10, take a reading, and plot it. Then once you're through the steep section, back out on the flat section of your graph, you can go back to 1 mil additions until you've reached 25 mils of added acid. If you follow this procedure, you should end up with a fantastic titration curve, which you can then use for your report and for your calculations. Please don't forget when you're putting your pipettes and burettes back in the cupboard that they go in with the tips facing upwards. When it comes to your write-up, there are a few simple facts for you to remember. First of all, you should think carefully about what a buffer solution is and what it's supposed to do, and then compare that with what you saw in the lab. Regarding your pH titration, it is a titration, a chemical reaction, where you had a known substance, your acid, and an unknown substance, your base. Stoichiometry should therefore yield a lot more information about your unknown substance, your cloudy ammonia solution. 
Again, do make sure that you've noted down the dilution factor that tells you how we prepared the dilute ammonia solution for you. And finally, if you're having any problems with the chemical equations or questions in this practical report, make sure you have a look at your lecture notes. There are a lot of strong hints and useful information that will help you write up this practical report. Okay, all yours. Get in there and enjoy yourself.